Hi there, my name is Nicola and I work on the Transform in the Trent Valley Landscape Partnership Scheme. As Community Engagement Officer, part of my role is to give presentations and to work with parish councils in the area to spread awareness of the Transform in the Trent Valley Scheme and to work with and support what parish councils are doing in their local communities. So today I'm joined by Lewis Anderson um, and he's going to give us a bit of an insight into what parish councils do and how he became a parish councillor. So Lewis, would you like to just introduce yourself? Yep, so um, as Nicholas said, my name's Lewis Anderson. Um, I sit on three parish councils within uh, East Staffordshire and I'm involved in, in several other community um, organisations and you know, I'm happy to be involved and support Triple TV today and hopefully explain a bit about what being a parish council is all about. Brilliant, thank you very much. So firstly, why did you want to become a parish councillor? Well, as I just mentioned, I mean, I was involved in several other community groups and I've always really wanted to make a change in the community. There's lots of things I can see that, that need change, um, as I think many people do. And I think a lot of people sort of see, you know, struggle to see where they fit into the process. And for me, um, voluntary groups is a great way in. Um, but what I experienced really was, was a constant hitting a brick wall really. There's, there's great work you can do in a voluntary um, group but ultimately you will eventually need support from the councils and, and local government and that was really why I wanted to get involved. Um, in particular really, I mean I'm involved in, in I set up uh, with a couple of people, Bert and Hope, the homeless um, organisation and, and we do great work there but again we needed support um, from councils so in getting involved in parish councils it just gives you that extra voice that way of working with other councillors and also the contacts to be able to just take uh, that change a bit further and fight a bit harder for, for what you want to change in the area. Oh, that's brilliant thanks very much. Um, so what does the role involve um, and can you give a, an example of, kind of how much time commitment, how much work is involved in the role of being a councillor as well? Well in, in terms of time it's as much as you really want to um, dedicate to it really. As, a, as I mentioned I sit on three and, and they are different sizes um, one of those is the largest parish council within East Staffordshire, Horninglow and Eton, um, where obviously there's a bit more to do um, than in Outwards Parish Council which is one of the smallest so again it, it's about really how flexible you are and um, how much time you want to give and, and what you want to do with the role really. Um, in terms of what you can do in the role, what are the parish councils for, often people sort of dismiss them as, as not the most, um, there's certainly more influential um, bodies you can join in terms of councils but parish councils are sort of the grassroots body for anybody who wants to get involved um, in local government and really push for a change. So um, the, the sort of things we discuss, I mean very recently um, we've been discussing the coronavirus and giving grants to local organisations which is obviously um, it's something small you can do but it makes a big impact in the end. Um, we also look after some parish councils um, look after play areas and, and green spaces etc which are obviously great if you want to get involved in, in conservation or, or just providing a facility uh, for the public but for me I think the biggest role is really being that voice for, um, for, your, for your area for the residents because as you sort of move up the council ladder there's much bigger much larger councils that sort of lose that local touch and being a parish councillor for me it's all about being on the ground, listening to what residents want and pushing those concerns up, making sure they're dealt with. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. That community element is really important, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so could you just explain briefly, sorry, what the process is of becoming a councillor? OK, well, there's sort of two ways in, if you like, um, not as many out. <laughs> um, <laughs> You can stand for election, um, as you expect really, and um, the elections are held every four years in May. Now we've, we've just had sort of the, the round of um, parish council elections in, in 2019, so obviously there's, there's a bit of a wait there. Um, now what they do, that is a complete sort of overhaul of the council, everyone that's on it is, is kicked off, 
um, and everyone and, and anyone can then stand for those positions and if there's a contest it'll obviously go for election and people vote for who they want to represent themselves. Um, alternatively, uh, there are vacancies that, that sometimes appear in parish councils. What you'll notice is often there are vacancies sort of ongoing in parish councils, uh, which is a great shame really, because there's obviously a stronger voice when more people are on them and, and working together. So if there are vacancies, and, and most often there are, you can then stand for co-option to those councils, which means you can just get in contact with the clerk of the council or, or any of the councillors and they'll be able to give you the application form. And then it, it's a little bit like a, a job interview, I suppose. They'll, they'll ask you a couple of questions and, and what you want to do with the role and, and then it's the council that way that vote on whether you're elected or not. I mean, when I first joined um, a parish council in 2018, I was co-opted, so I went through that interview process but then obviously I was booted off last May and had to stand <laughs> for election for the others. So both processes are, are very easy to go through. Um, I must say if you do end up standing for election there's a hell of a lot of paperwork, um, considerably less if you stand for co-option but, but both ways um, allow you to get on and give your voice. Oh, that's great thanks. Um, and the co-option vacancies, do they tend to be advertised on the parish council websites as well? Yes, they do. Um, typically, as they arise, they'll go on to East Staffordshire for a council's website as well. But it, it's best look which parish you're in and, and send the clerk an email or have a look at the website and see um, if they've got vacancies or, or if not, you can register your interests and I'm sure they'll let you know if, if a, a vacancy does appear. Brilliant, thanks. So thinking about your time as uh, a councillor on three different parishes, uh, what kind of things have you achieved and, and, and have you done in that time? Well, one of the, the big things I wanted to focus on joining um, the parish councils to start with was getting um, young people involved. Often with, with parishes, you, you picture little, little rooms with, with stuffy old white men and, and you know, it, it, I must say it's often the truth. <laughs> Um, I mean, I only change it to stuffy young uh, white <laughs> men, but, but I think getting the, the diversity up is a, a very important um, thing. So one of the first things I did was put forward a proposal to the three councils that I sit on and also others to um, create youth councillor positions. So these are for people who are under 18 who want to get involved um, and give their voice. Now, Unfortunately, they, are, they aren't able to vote, but, but in every other way, you are involved in the discussion and the debate, etc., in the uh, council meetings, which is a great way of, of getting involved for, for young people. And, and again, in Outwards, we, we've got some really, really good um, youth councillors that, that are very engaged. Um, in, in terms of other things, I mean, I mentioned the, the coronavirus um, sort of impact and, and what we've been doing as parish councils. Well, that was something that I put forward. I was very keen on getting a committee set up so councils can react quickly to um, the virus. Um, so again, that's something that not necessarily parish councils can do, but with a bit of imagination and, and working within the rules of them, they can get sort of that wider reach out there. So we've successfully funded in Horninglow and Eaton, although a new scheme, we've, we've got grants going out to several um, voluntary organisations helping with food parcels and, and people in work um, and it, it's just that really again these ideas once one parish adopts them they can be shared and that's something I've really sort of pushed on and again being on three parish councils it gives me that sort of extra opportunity to really get the councils working together um, each of us cover a relatively small area in the grand scheme of things but if we all come together and all shout together and push in the same direction we can obviously get a lot more done and i'm glad that over the last couple of months that the parishes have started working a lot more closely together and um, last month we had our first meeting all together with the mp and hopefully going forward that'll be continuing um, and it just gives us that wider reach rather than just on parish council issues um, we can then push other areas to do what they want to do, you know, what we want them to do, rather, um, in, in much uh, larger scheme. I mean, just for an example, 
with with the meeting with the MP, I raised um, an issue that students at the Ferris had raised about um, lack of sort of obviously with, with um, online teaching, lack of teaching um, with coronavirus and digital teaching. So that's nothing that we, we typically deal with, but through using collective voice, we can get messages to MPs and actually to government. So you can get uh, quite a, a strong far reach through parish councils. And I think that's often forgotten, um, but it's certainly worth, worth getting involved and helping do that. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so final question then. Um, how can a scheme like Transform in the Trent Valley help to support the work that parish councils do? Well, I mean, as with any scheme, it's, it, I mean, my view, it would be more what can the parish councils do to help <laughs> um, people TV? I mean, we obviously have our own um, sort of agendas and what we want to try and get done within the year and within the term. Um, but for, for groups coming along from the outside looking in, um, I think it's just important to have that conversation, to ask if they can come to a meeting. Most parish councils are, are happy to have someone uh, come and present ideas, obviously a bit harder at the moment, um, but nonetheless it can be done through uh, digital events. And I think, you know, because there's such that grassroots level in the community, for um, community projects, they are absolutely perfect for others to sort of come in and work together um, on projects. For example, again, in Horninglow and Eton, we've worked with um, community groups running play schemes for uh, young people um, in the areas. In, in Tutbury, we've worked with the church on projects um, to celebrate certain events, um, such as VE Day, um, etc. So it's just you know, really pushing that community spirit and bringing people together. Um, if groups want to get involved, the parish council are in a great position in sort of recruiting and rallying around the local community for good. And, you know, the more people that do that and get involved, the better and um, better the outcomes, which can only um, be a good thing. Sure, that's fantastic. I'll have to uh, ask if I can come and give presentations to your parishes then. <laughs> Absolutely. <Be glad laughs> to have you. Brilliant. That was all really interesting. Thank you so much for that. That's given a really good insight into what parishes do and how people can get involved. Um, so that's all from us, really. So thank you very much for your time, Lewis. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll meet again and speak again soon. I hope so. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank wonderful. you. Bye.